What's up guys? Welcome back to Whisper Tactical. My name's John and apparently everyone wants to hear the story of when a meth head ran into my house and almost got shot. Like it was crazy. He ran face first into the muzzle of my gun and it's a, I'll tell you all about it. This encounter is actually why if I ever have to go to the door at the nighttime when no one should be coming to my house, I've got a pistol in one hand with a flashlight that protrudes about that far past the barrel and I've got a knife in the other hand. Uh, that encounter taught me that you don't have time to do anything you need to do if someone is within touching distance. Like, you don't. So, now I carry a flashlight on my firearms that I use for home defense and my truck gun. And I also carry a knife in the other hand when I answer the door. That way, if something happens, I can just stick the, the edge of the knife out. And I'll tell you why. But anyway... Uh, before we get into the video, guys, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I upload new content. Smash that thumbs up button for me. And if you've had anything like this happen to you, anything crazy, let me know down in the comment section below because I'm curious. Um, I'll never beg you all for Patreon money. It's never going to happen. So what I will ask you to do is to support the companies that support me, and that is Gunbutter. Gunbutter is my biggest channel supporter uh, www.gunbutter.com use code whisper at checkout to save yourself 20 percent. i promise you will not be disappointed with that order if you order a two-thirds ounce bottle of gun butter and a tube of trigger butter anyways let's talk about this whenever kayla and i were we didn't have any kids it was just me and her living together it was it was late at night it was about two o'clock in the morning i had to get up at five for, for work the next morning and uh we lived alone, right? So all of a sudden, about 2 o'clock in the morning, someone starts beating on our door so hard that it woke us both up. And we raised up and we looked at each other. And I was like, is someone beating on our door? And they started screaming, help. Screaming to the top of their lungs. Help me. Help me. They're trying to kill me. I thought it was a woman. And Kayla said, is that my mom? And I was like, I don't know. It sounds like it. So I grabbed my gun, which was a Smith & Wesson m and 40 Gen 1, and I had one in the chamber, 165 grain Federal HST. I did not have my hand, finger on the trigger, but I did have it in the trigger guard. I had the gun down on my side like this. I opened the door, and when I opened the door, the guy jerked my fucking screen door open so hard that... He broke the lock, he broke the handle, he broke everything, and the screen door just came wide open. He ran as hard as he could into my house. I know Kayla's behind me. So the quickest thing I could do was this. Pull the trigger. Problem is, he came in so fast that my reaction time, as quick as I was, was not fast enough. And he's lucky, because had he not tripped and fallen, he would have taken a round through the chest or the gut. But um, he fell. And when he fell, his forehead hit the muzzle of my gun, and he knocked it out of battery, and I had a dead trigger. That is why I now carry a flashlight on a, a truck gun or a home defense gun, because if something happens and it's up close and personal, and I need to take the shot... The flashlight will help stop it from getting knocked out of battery. Or if I have to press, like if he'd have came in and tackled me and I'd have had a dead trigger trying to get a shot off, it would have not been good. But if I had a flashlight on and I could just stick the flashlight to his stomach, it would have never knocked the gun out of battery. <clears throat> That's why I put a flashlight on my guns now. I don't use a flashlight for home defense. I know my home better than anyone else. Everyone that knows me knows you don't come in my house after it's time to go to bed or you're going to get shot. It's just not going to happen. So I will go to where I need to go to. Uh, you come in my house. I don't want to identify you. You're just going to get a fucking shot. I'm not going to try to give my spot away just so I can identify who you are coming into my house at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's just not how that's going to work. Because everyone that knows me that I care about that doesn't need to get shot won't come to my house. And if they do, they'll call me or knock on my window. Anyway, on with the story. He immediately realizes he just ran face first into the fucking muzzle of a gun. He stands up, he backs up, he steps outside of my house onto the porch, and he says, I'm sorry, they're trying to kill me. Now, I immediately 
felt sad for him because I've been there. I've been there myself, right? Uh, not that exact situation, but I'm in recovery myself, right? So I knew the fear that he was going through. I knew what he was seeing. Um, I knew how scared he was, and I knew he wasn't trying to cause harm. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times where people are trying to cause harm, and this is, I didn't take no chances. So this is why I told Kayla, listen to me. Go to the kitchen, get my get my paring knife. I have a little paring knife when I was a chef, and uh, it's really fucking sharp, really sharp. So, and it's really pointy. I said, give me my paring knife, and she brought it to me, and uh, I said, lay it over my shoulder, hand it to me. So she handed it to me. I handed her the gun, and I said, listen. I said, I want you to go to the back door. I said, and I want you to stand about 15 feet away from it, and I want you to aim the gun at the back door. If that door opens, you fucking put a round through it. Because what meth heads will do is they will have a big commotion at the front door. That way everyone's there and they're not paying attention to the rest of the house. And they'll break in somewhere else in the house. And that's they go in and, and steal shit. That's what they do around here. So I said, you know, if that front door, if that back door opens, you fucking put a round through it. I'll take the blame for it. As simple as that. Um, but I'm not going to take my eyes off of this guy. And I want to make sure no one comes in behind us because you're behind me and I wouldn't be able to help you. Uh, so she took the gun. She brought me a knife. And I told the guy, I said, what are you trying to do, man? What is what is up? What's wrong? Where do you live? What? Where do you need to go? And he was screaming to the top of his lungs, help me, help me. They're trying to kill me. They're trying to kill me. So I tell him, I said, dude, calm down. I said, step inside. I said, come on, come inside. And I said, you don't have anyone else with you? And he was like, no, man, I've been running. I'm running. They're right up there in a gray car. You see them? Oh, my God. Dude, this guy started ducking on my front porch. He rolled off the fucking steps backwards. He was scared shitless. And, uh, bro, he started jumping. You are shooting. They're shooting. There was no one there. There was no one fucking there. So I was like, man, come on. Get inside. Bef you know, get inside before they get you. That's the only way I could get him to come inside and sit down. So I was like, dude, they're coming. Come inside and sit on my chair right here. And uh, he was like, can I come inside? And I said, you can come inside. I said, and you can sit in that chair. I said, Kayla, is anyone at the back door? She said, no. I said, bring me the gun. So she brought me to the she brought me the gun. I said, I want you to go to the bedroom and and sit in the bedroom and fucking wait a minute, right? So I stepped into the hallway in between that chair and the bedroom, and I said, she's going to the bedroom. She's all I care about. If you get up and take one step past that chair, I'm going to shoot you. Do you understand? And he said, yeah, I understand, I understand. I just, I'm scared. I, can I sit here? And I said, yeah, you're more than welcome to sit there. But if you get up and you take a step towards me, I said, I will shoot you. He said, okay, will you call the police? And I was like, fuck, man. I'm not a law caller. I, I'm not going to fucking call the law on you and have you arrested because you're going to jail. And he was like, dude, please call him. He's like, I can't get away from these guys. They've been trying to kill me for hours. And I said, brother... How much have you done? How much meth have you done? I don't know. He couldn't breathe. The color in his eyes were gone. There was so much. He had, his pupils were dilated so big that he had no color. And I was like, Jesus, he's damn near overdosed. He's been up for days. He's fucking hallucinating. <clears throat> and I said, I don't want to call the police. I said, can I take you home? Can, do you know where you you're, you came from? He was like, dude, I don't know where I'm at. They're just trying to kill me, and I can't hide nowhere. I want to go to jail. And I was like, are you sure? So I called I called the police station. I didn't call 911, but I called the police station. I said, listen, I've got a guy sitting in my living room. He is geeked the fuck out on meth. He's hallucinating. People are trying to kill him. He barged in my house. He almost got himself killed. Um... He wants you to send the police because he needs help. And I said, medically, he probably needs help as well because he has done so much meth that he's hallucinating and you cannot see the color of his eyes. It's only pupil. And I said, so, so send someone to help him, please. And they were like, what happened? I told him what happened. I said, I do have a gun. And they were like, well, you need to put the gun down. And I was like, no, I will fucking not put the gun down. I said, when the officer arrives at my house, 
and this man is no longer in my house and he is on my porch and the door is closed, then I will put my firearm down. That is it. Plain and simple, okay? I will not fucking put my gun down until he is out of my house because no matter how small he is and no matter how big I am, I cannot hurt him. I've gotten a fight one time with a guy on meth. He is now dead. Uh, rest in peace, Isaac. Um, guy I went to school with, good friend, but he got geeked out on meth and started running that mouth. We got in a fight. I broke every single rib on the left side of his body. Every fucking rib. And he was still fighting me. The last time I hit him, I just turned to mush. And uh, I wouldn't hit him in the face because we were friends. I thought if I'd just give him body shots, it would be okay. But I literally hit him 14 times in the ribs. And the last time I hit him in the ribs, it turned to mush. It broke every fucking rib on the left side of his body. And uh, I knew he wouldn't stop. I knew he couldn't breathe. Like, he, he had a fucking collapsed lung. He wasn't breathing good. But he was still fucking fighting me because he had so much energy from being geeked out. So, I told the guy, I'm not putting this fucking gun down. So, anyway, he was like, can I talk to the police? And I was like, you want to fucking talk to the police? Sure. I said, hey, is it okay if he talks to you? And they were like, he wants to talk to us? And I was like, yeah, dude, he wants to talk to you. So... I handed him the phone. He talks to him. And it, I mean, it took, it took six minutes for the police to get there. And we live downtown. You know, we live four blocks from the police station. It took them five or six minutes to get there. It took them long enough to get there that something bad could have happened way before they got there. But anyway, they got there. This motherfucker takes off running out my house with my phone running to the police screaming help help he's got a gun he's in the house he's trying to kill me he held me hostage like I was like you motherfucker so I put the gun down on the couch I walk outside and uh, he was standing there and I smacked the shit out of him I smacked him on the back of the head I said give me my fucking phone and I said I didn't fucking hold you hostage I, I said you almost got yourself killed when you ran into my house I said, I didn't hold this motherfucker hostage. I said, he's geeked the fuck out. He needs help. He broke my fucking screen door. And I let him in because that invisible gray car up there in the road, you see it? And the cops started laughing. I said, those guys are trying to fucking kill him. And I said, take him to jail. Get him some fucking help. And and see what you can do, right? So he was like, here's your phone, man. Uh, are you good? You want to press any charges? I said, no, dude. This guy just needs fucking help. I'm not pressing any charges. You know, why would I go out of my way to make someone's life even worse? If you are willing to take meth and melt it down in a fucking spoon or a bottom of a can or a pop or a, a, a water bottle lid or something, and you're willing to break it down, draw it up in a needle, and shoot it into your fucking veins, then you have got a lot of shit going on. Right, I'm not going to fucking add to that by pressing charges on you for breaking and entering and shit like that. I'm not going to do that. Like, that's bullshit. This guy just needs fucking help. Um, a charge that's going to keep him in jail for fucking six months is not what he needs. So, I was like, I'm not pressing charges. Like, there, I don't want any anything to be filed. This man needs help. So, I see him all the time. I see him walking up and down the road with his big old woman all the time. He's itty bitty and skinny and she is fucking massive compared to him. But I see him walking up and down the road all the time. And every time I see him, he has no idea who I am. To this day, he has no idea who I am. And I see him all the time. And I think to myself, man, one fucking bad choice almost ended your life. He came a fraction of a fucking second of dying. A fraction of a second of dying. He fell at just the right time and his head connected with the muzzle of my gun just at the right time because I pulled the trigger. I pulled it. Like, I straight up pulled it. Had he hit with the other foot and hesitated a, a, a quarter of a second, he would have taken a round through the face as he fell. It was it, it was bad. Like, it was, it was a bad ordeal, but it taught me a lot. It taught me that... If me and you are three feet away from each other, personally, I'd rather have a knife. Because that knife 
your your hands are going to be on me before I can draw and shoot and make sure I'm, I've got a good shot. Um, it wouldn't just be a wild shot. So that encounter really taught me a lot, and uh, you know, it was a uh, it was an experience that's for sure. And uh, I've never really told that story. I've never really told that story full on like that. But uh, yeah, it was crazy. It taught me a lot. Uh, it scared the shit out of Kayla. Um, at the same time, it made me feel really bad for him because I look back to to when I was struggling like that, and I thought, "Damn it, man! Damn it!" You know, it just it was a wake up call for me all the way around. I mean, honestly, but um, it was sad. And uh, he got help. He's sober now. Did you hurt your hand, baby? I'm yeah. so sorry. I love you. Let's go get some food. But yeah, so that's what happened. That's the story. I want to know if you have, if you guys have experienced anything like that. I'll so see you all later. Bad.